Hi everyone. Today I'm going to talk about support counting of candidates in database scan. Okay, so you remember that in the a priori algorithm, we do this support counting when we uh, after we find after we get these candidates from the previous level, right? Then we get their occurrences of each candidate, and then we determine who passed the minimum support count to be the actual frequent items that, that we want, right? So in this uh, process, we need to get the occurrences of these candidates. And how do we do that? For this one, this item set one, two, we will go to the original database and check. Okay, so one and two times, right? So it occurs two times. And for one, four, we go back to the database again and we check one, four, okay, one and two times, right? So for each candidate, we need to go to the database and scan it once, right? So you can imagine it would be really time consuming if we have thousands of candidates and thousands of transactions, right? So in today's video, I'm going to talk about the hash tree method to do the support counting. And in this way, we only need to scan the database once for one level for all these candidates, okay? So now let's get into it. So for this hash tree method, there are also two main steps. The first step is to store all candidates in a hash tree. And the second step is to use this function, which takes two parameters. The first parameter is all candidates in the hash tree format. And the second uh, parameter is the one transaction. Okay. So we use this subset function to find all candidates in this transaction and by scan the database once, scan every transaction, we can get the support countings of all candidates. Okay, so now let's get into details. Firstly, we need to store all candidates in the hash tree, right? So let's say um, we have C3 and these are all candidates and now we need to store all the all of them in a hash tree. And you know, hash tree, it has a hash, hash function, right? So let's say the hash function is xi mode three. And the, the threshold is three. Okay, so firstly, we start from the root. Okay, and the, the xi mode three for the root, it is x1 mode three, that means the first element the first element most three so there would be uh three answers right it can be one or two or zero right for this xi mode three and let's see for this candidate the first one mode three is one right so it will go to here <clears throat> and same for this one one uh, one two seven because Okay, one mode three is one and the same. One, six, seven. All right, so now it, pa uh, it is over the threshold three. It has four in this node and, and we need to split this node by a second uh, hash function, which is xi mode three. That means we check the second element in the candidate. And it also has three uh, answers, right? One and two and zero, right? So for this one, it come, comes to this branch and one, two, seven, because two, right? So one, four, five will go to here and one, six, seven will go to here, right? So next, two, five, six. Okay, so remember now we start from the root, right? So two mode three, two mode three is two. So it is here, three, four, six, because three mode three is zero, right? So three, four, seven, three, five, eight, and three, six, seven. Okay, so again, this node exceeds the threshold and we need to split this node, right? And again, this is the level two, okay? So the hash function will be xi mode three and uh, it will be, be uh, three branches, okay? So these two, it will come here 
and uh, this five would do and this one will be in this branch all right okay so the next uh candidate is four five six right so four five six we start from the root and four mode three is one so we go to this branch and then five mode three is two so we go to this branch so it would end up here okay next candidate four five eight four go to here five go to here and four five eight okay so now this node exceeds the threshold again and we need to split it right so we will slip split this node by a hash function this time it will be x3 mode 3 okay so it check the third element in the candidate and uh, there are also three branches okay so this four and seven it will co uh, come to this branch and uh, four five six the six would go to here and four five eight would be here okay because eight mode sorry is two right and uh, the next element uh the next candidate is four five nine and four you go to here five you go to here and nine it would end up in this branch okay so uh this is how we store all candidates in the hash tree so now we have all the candidates in the hash tree format right okay so now let's uh, talk about the second step which is to use the subset function to find all candidates in this transaction t and let's say we have four transactions now so firstly we um, do this uh, subset c3 for this t1 okay so we need to find all candidates in this t1 and you know for the candidates in c3 it contains uh three elements right so the three elements the first element can only be one or three in for this t1 right because if the first element is five then it does not have enough elements for c3 right so it can only be one or three so for if the first element is one that means the left two elements are out of three five eight right so if the first element is three that means the left two can be five eight right so um for this case firstly we mode one and one mode three will go to this branch okay so uh it will go to here and uh, It is like this and then the second element can only be three or five it cannot be eight because otherwise we would not have a third element here right so it can only be three or five and when we mode three it will go to here that means the sixth third element can only be five or eight right but anyway we uh, reach a leaf then we can just check Okay, one six seven is not here, so uh, we don't have any candidates in this case, right? And uh, the second element can uh, can also be five, so it will be five five mode three will go to this branch, and it will be one five eight. Okay, so if you are writing a a code, so you need to you cannot stop here. You, it is an internal code. You need to mold this eight and go to this branch and you would end up a leaf and then you can check the candidate right so you know in this case it is still zero right it's not in this transaction but if you're doing a paper exercise at this step you can just check 158 is not in uh, any of this so you can just that means this this case does not contain any candidate in it right so this is the first case that is the first element is one and for this case that means we mode uh three 
first, we use the hash function on the first element, right? So three mod three is zero, so it will go to this branch. And again, if you're writing a code, you need to mod this five again, go to a leaf, and then you can check. Okay, so it is actually, it contains a uh, candidate, right? So if you're doing your paperwork, you can just check three, uh, three, five, eight. It, uh, it only has one, you know, if it contains candidates, it can only be three, five, eight, right? So you can just check if three, five, eight is in this hash tree and you see here it is. So that means it occurs once, right? So that's for the first transaction. And for the second transaction, you can see that if it contains a candidate, it can only be one candidate, that is 367, right? And you can mode three, it will go to this branch, and six, you will go to this branch, and here it is, right? So it actually contains a candidate, 367. And for the third transaction, 37, okay, so it only contains two elements, that means it cannot contain any candidates of level three, right? So you can just simply skip it. And for this T4, again, the third, uh, the three element, and the first element can only be one, four, or five, right? And if it's, more, uh, sorry, two, if it's two, it will be four, five, six, eight. If it's four, it will be five, six, eight. If it's five, it will be six, eight, right? So for this case, firstly, we mode two, and it simply goes to this branch. And okay, it would, and you can, we reach a leaf, right? And you can just check if two, five, six is in this transaction, and yes, two, five, six. So it occurs once. And uh, yeah, that's it, right? So for this case, it would be, Firstly, we need to mode four, and four will go to here. That means five, six, eight. And the second element can be five or six, right? So first we check five, and it will come to here, four, five, right? And uh, again, you can see that four, five, six is in this transaction, and four, five, eight is also in the transaction, right? So it will be one time. And uh, there's another case, which is four, six, eight, right? So four, six, six would go to here. And uh, it does not contain any candidate, right? So it's still zero. And the third case is five and six, eight. So five will go to this branch and you can see it does not contain any candidate, right? And uh, that's it, right? So for these four, after we scan them once, we can get the occurrences of all candidates, right? So in this case, only uh, these candidates occur once and other candidates do not occur anytime, right? Basically, they are zero. So that is the answer for the support counting of C3 for these four transactions, right? Okay, so now you see um, how we do that in the ha uh, using this hash tree method, okay? Firstly, we store all candidates in the hash tree, right? You remember how we do that? The first level, the second level, and the third level, okay? And after we storing them, we can use this subset function. Okay, basically what we do here and get their occurrences of all candidates, right?